and he wouldn't let me give up. Y'all know I had to say that, because that is so true. He wouldn't let me give up. He just kept me through it all, you know. He just, even when I was feeling like I didn't want to pull myself through, when you realize at the end of the day that you're still here, you know it wasn't you. You know it was God all along. All along. So I just truly, y'all know me, I'm just always say I truly thank God for keeping me through it all. I thank God for his grace and mercy. I just thank God. You know, sometimes you say you can't thank God enough. You really right. can't. You can't thank God enough. All you can just do is say it every single day. Amen. I don't wait for those times of when I'm feeling bad or I need prayer right away. I do it every single day because I know what I need in my life, and that's God. And that's who I lean on every day. I lean on God, you know. So I just want to say I know a while back, you know, I was sharing with you all about my health condition and you know i haven't shared it live on facebook or with a lot of people but you know i talk about it on the radio show because our show is about inspiring other it's about lifting others up and how we can encourage one another through what we go through so you all know that um i got sick back in the end of march uh first it started off with a severe um well the end of february severe bronchitis that lingered on the whole month of march the end of march uh, still with the bronchitis, I end up having these really bad cramps that sent me to the ER. From that, I had a blood issue, and the blood issue was severe. And April, I forget what day it was, the day before um, Easter, my husband found me unconscious in the bedroom. So come to find out, it's, it's a major blood issue. Um, I didn't have insurance because insurance was just too much. They wanted me to pay $754 a month. I could not afford that. Just simple as that. That's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. So my husband went back to work um, part-time just as an associate so he could just bring a little extra in so we can pay for health insurance. You know, um, At the end of his first day of work, they asked him to be an assistant manager. So y'all know. Y'all know, know I'm going to go in, but y'all know how <laughs> God is. <laughs> You know how God is. He's amazing. Yes. And he's the God that can make anything that we think is impossible possible. Yes. He changed everything. So, <clears throat> excuse me. At the end of the day, um, Corey was asked to be an assistant manager. And with that, all benefits came. So he ended up having health insurance. So we got medical in coverage the first day at work. Praise God. You know what I'm saying? I mean, what more can you... Why am I always so excited because I know what God has done for me. I know what he has done for my family. I know what he has done in my marriage. I just know how he had changed things to make it better for us. How he has just lifted us up and, you know, just give us that moment to just keep on going and share with us. Because God don't want us to keep what he has done for us to ourselves. You know, he wants people to know what he's capable of, capable yes, of doing. He how he could change things. How he made situations Better than we even, he will blow our mind. Let me just say that. You know, and for some that don't believe, he will blow your mind. He really would. So I just thank God for my husband, one, for saying, you know what, my wife need help now. Let me go back to work so we can make some extra money so she could get health coverage to, you know, get this condition fixed. Um, though it took some months, um, I was able to um, go to the doctor after insurance kicked in and everything. So last month they found out it was a huge it was about the size of my hand uh, with my fingers out going uh, like in a straight out. Let me just say that. It is a huge um, polyp. And the polyp is what caused it, what's causing it blood issues. So for months, i just been really just drained. My iron has been low. Blood, everything just been like low. So I've been fighting every day, just leaning on God, trusting God. Through it, you know, I turned down a few blood transfusions because I wanted to believe God. I wanted to trust God in my process. I wanted to trust God through what I was going through. And here I am today. I have surgery on um, October the 18th, so I'm excited about um, transitioning back to that energy that, as my daughter called me, that social butterfly, you know. So <laughs> that's what she called me, the social butterfly. Sometimes she'd see me around the house, uh-uh, Ma, I need you to pick back up and keep doing what you would normally do. So sometimes it was hard because I was weak. You know, I, w I didn't have that energy and strength that I would normally have, but I would just always fight my way through. So I just had to share that. 
And um, after the surgery, October 18th, I'll come back and I'll share about all of that and how Edwina is getting herself back together because we always talk about how important it is to take care of self. Some yes. things are unforeseen. Some yes. things happen that we don't know, but you have a choice. Take care of it. Get help the best way you know how. So that's my moment for this morning. Um, and uh, oh, and don't forget the fourth annual Caregivers Recognition Black Tie Gala, November the 11th in Hampton, Virginia. Hey, come dress to impress. It's about us. And it's for caregivers by caregivers because we are caregivers ourselves. Um, that's Again, that's November the 11th in Hampton, Virginia. Go to our website, www.kellys, K-E-L-L-Y-S, Choice, Inc., <laughs> Dot org and submit your information no honoree is not a nomination we don't do nominations when it comes to caregivers because I don't feel like caregivers should compete against each other right. so I don't do nominations all honorees that we have submitted we honor all of them and it's free on Kelly's choice but we do ask you, make sure you don't come along. Bring your family members or mm -hmm. husband or spouse or friend or whoever you could bring along with you to enjoy this amazing moment with you. And um, that's what I want to say about the caregivers event. Uh, we have a call on the line. Yes, we have a call on the line. Okay. okay. Hello, caller. Yes, this is Kalisha. Hello, Kalisha. How are you? Um, Kalisha is a caregiver. She has an event coming up this Saturday, and I wanted mm. her to share because it's for autism. And you know how we are, caregivers and for the special needs and the disabled and all of that. So we're going to give her a moment to share about her event. Go ahead, Kalisha. Thank you for calling in. Um, thank, no problem. I'm glad I was able to call in. Um, I, so tomorrow I will be doing my third annual Awesomely Autistic Art Show. Um, it will be held at the Newsom House Museum, uh, 2803 Oak Avenue in Newport News. Um, the Historical Newsom House Museum and Cultural Arts Center, this is the third year we've done it there. All of our artists are autistic. They're on a spectrum disorder. Um, so one way or another, whether they're on a lower functioning level or a higher functioning level, they all deal with the, uh, the disorder uh, that we call autism. Um, it's going to be a great event. We have 11 artists coming out this year uh, displaying their art. We have uh, some performances. Um, all of the individuals are special needs individuals. So this is a time for them to sign. They're going to receive some awards. They're going to receive lots of food, a lot of recognition uh, for just showing their unique abilities. That's awesome. That's awesome. It's always good when you're giving back to the community and, you know, sharing what yes. you do because she wake up with this every day. You know, her son has autism. So to be able to do something in the community for that is phenomenal. And what she's doing is different. You yes. Know? That's yes. totally different. You know, so if anybody out there in a the local area, look, we always say, even if you far away, hey, we always welcome you as well. You never know what you're going to get from just experiencing something away from where you are. So, you far away, come on and join us. Hampton Rose got some things going on. So, thank you, Kalisha. We yeah, definitely... it's going to be people coming from, it's going to be people coming from New Jersey. I have a, a body artist coming from New Jersey. I have a young lady coming from Maryland. Um, so, it, we, it's not no exact destination of where they're coming from. Um, it's a blessing for me to have people uh, that want to be a part of the event that's founded on Instagram. Um, so I'm just blessed. God has been very, very good to me. The devil is trying to keep me down today, but I, I intend on fighting. You know how that is. When you're doing something good, he's going to attack you. It's just a matter of you staying, holding up, and can continue to press on. So That's right. As long as you keep doing that, you got this, girl. It's already a win. Yes. Yes, ma'am. I am. I did. I had a real big hit this morning. I mean, literally, I... I that really affects me getting the girl from New Jersey. And I had to take a breath and I had to take a moment. You know, I deal with fibromyalgia as well. So I've yeah. had a very, very bad flare up. Um, I had a bad flare up the weekend. Um, so just to kind of, you know, to have a flare up six days before like one of the biggest events for my organization, you know, and then dealing with the financial issue that hit me this morning, I, I just, I had to just take a moment. I said, you know what, Lord? This is, I, I know I'm doing right because it's just the harder it takes for you to get to something, um, the harder you have to work. That means it's meant for you. So I'm, I'm right. just thankful. I'm excited for tomorrow. 
and I'm ready to go. I mean, I've been on a journey all my life, so I can't let I can't let what happens today keep me down. You know, I have a 15 year old sitting right here with me, so I have to let her know. And it's so funny. The lady was just talking about the polyp. My daughter is having issues with her blood. This morning, uh, she didn't get her uh, sports physical. Um, the doctor didn't give her clear to play sports because her hemoglobin is so low. Mm. So, you know, just, just thinking, and I had to tell her this morning, you know, she wants to run track, and I told her, it's, it's so hard for you to get to the things that you're meant to get to. That means you got to work harder. That's so right. it's, it's, it's meant for you. So I'm, I'm blessed. I'm thankful. I'm, I'm thankful to receive the Caregiver of the Year Award. I'm, I'm still honored just to receive that and just the recognition, you know, for what I've been doing. Cause you know, I don't, I don't look for people to see it. I just do it. Cause I feel like that's my purpose. That's what God has me here for. Right. Right. Well, we thank you. We appreciate you coming on and sharing with you, uh, sharing with the listeners about your event. And um, I'll make sure I put post it on share it with me on my page as well. Okay. Thank you so much. You're thank you welcome. for letting me be on today. Absolutely. Have a blessed day. <laughs> You too. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so wasn't that phenomenal, you know? It's always great to hear good news. There's so much negative stuff going around in the world. Yes. It's always a blessing to be able to bring somebody on that yes. can share something great. Mm -hmm. And seeing that's why I always, I've been sharing on the radio about my condition because you just never know what people are going through. Nobody really know what I've been going through because I really don't share it like that. You don't. I yes. don't. And I just continue to you don't to show it. You're so <laughs> bubbly. God is so good. And I have to, that's why I give him all the praise yes. and the glory. I do. Well, we have an exciting show today. Um, I'm so excited about this moment. I've been following this young lady, a mm -hmm. young lady, for a while now. Um, a couple of years, actually. A couple yes. of years I've been following her. I think it was since 2014, maybe. Yes. And um, so I, I decided, I said, let me reach out to her and, and see if she would like to come on our show and share her journey. Because a few years ago, she was caring for her dad and going into the nursing homes and everything and now it's her mom so i'm like yeah let's just share this share this journey because you really never know what's behind everything so we're going to allow her um to share who she is tell us who she is a little bit about her and then go into the, her story and her journey about uh being a caregiver uh, without further ado, help us welcome no other than Sabrina Brown. Hello, Sabrina. Hello, 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 my sister. Thank you so much for having me on, Edwina. And thank you, Corey. It's an honor to be here to share the goodness of the Lord and just life experiences. Yes, yes. yes. So, Sabrina, um, okay, I, I'm going to take the blame for this because I always take the blame when it's me. I don't have her bio in front of me, you all, so I'm going to let her share a introduce herself that way first okay all right so well that's it. always an option <laughs> well I, I grew up in norfolk okay uh, grew up in tower to park you know housing project area have some fond memories of growing up in tower to park went to ruffner went to tower park elementary of course went to ruffner went to booger t and uh, graduated from virginia wesleyan college I initially went to odu but finished up at virginia wesleyan i worked for the government I work for the U.S. Postal Service, been there for 34 years, and I'm a member of Calvary Revival Church since 1997, and that's basically it. You know, I'm pretty spontaneous, so, yeah. Well, listen, it's pretty spontaneous. <laughs> okay, how do we take that? Where do we go with that? <laughs> well, I'm open. I'm open to all things adventurous yeah. and good. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm so spontaneous. Uh, just got to pick up a little bit more than what I, you know, where I, where I was before. So anyway, um, so Sabrina, um, let's talk about um, um, your, your journey. Share with us about your journey. Let's start with your dad. Let's just start with your dad and, you know, um, how this took place. Well, as I shared uh, with you in conversation, uh, my dad was an absentee father. Okay, so I guess I should have asked, how did you con reconnect? Right, with your we dad? reconnected. Okay. He was an absentee father. I'm grateful that my mom never really had anything negative. I mean, she was honest, you know, but to say about him, she didn't bash him. So that helped to uh, ha help us to be open, mm -hmm. you know, to reconnect him with him. We had no negative memories or pictures in our head of him. So 
what happened was a friend of mine actually shared with me that I should get to know my dad. And I was like, you know, I have no need or interest in getting to know my dad. My mother has fulfilled those needs. But shortly thereafter, my sister contacted us and told us that she found him. Wow. Yes. And it was so easy because I thought she used some search agency or maybe got a detective involved. But she just Googled him. Wow. And with a name like Willie Brown, a very common name, even though we last knew he was in Kansas, he was still there. But there could be so many Willie Browns. Mm -hmm. And she looked him up and the first person she called was him. You know, she basically asked him, I'm looking for Willie Brown, who had three children and named our names and was married to our mother. And it was him. Mm -hmm. So that's how we reconnected. Kim shared his information with us and he called me. That's awesome. Uh, can you share a little bit about how that conversation took off? <laughs> yes, yes, I can. Uh, when he initially called, the first thing he said, now, I mean, we're in our 30s. We're grown. We're okay. not, we're not um, young children. But we had met him. I, I'll, I'll go back a little bit. We had met him once before he had visited Tower Water Park to see us. And I was around 12. Okay. So I do remember his visit. I do remember cooking for him, you know, under my mom's, of course, guidance with me cooking. And I remember him saying that he would return. That would not be the last time that he was going to reconnect with us. But he didn't. So my sister found him. He called me. And it was so funny because he sounded so perky. And he said, Brina, this is dad. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my gosh, are you kidding me? This is dad. I mean, I don't even uh, know that title, you know, because I hadn't called anyone dad. My mother wasn't married to my stepfather at that point. He said, this is dad. And, and we just talked in general. But I, I was honest with him and forthright. And I said, I'm not comfortable calling you dad right now because it, that comes with relationship. I know you are my father, my biological father, but I'm not comfortable with calling you dad. And he was so cool. He said, that's okay. You know, I'm okay with that. He understood, you know, it's, it's good when you acknowledge and yes. what you've done Absolutely. and the consequences of those. And I had a lot of respect for him for that, mm -hmm. that he wasn't trying to just push it under the rug and say, let the past be the past. He said, no, I respect that. I just wanted to get to know you. And we, you know, conversation ensued quite often, and what really turned my heart towards him, I was, I was on assignment when he called me up in Maryland. I was on a, a six-week assignment, and what turned my heart towards him, I was driving back to Maryland. It was, I remember it was stormy, stormy outside, and a pastor was on a talk show, and he was sharing about how his father was very abusive and wasn't a part of his life, and how his father was on his, well, he was in the hospital, and he was, of course, very, very ill. Mm -hmm. He didn't know his father was going to die. He just knew he was very ill. And his father had asked for his forgiveness. Okay. And he shared with us how he could not forgive him. And his father passed. Oh, wow. And he was so hurt because he said, I'm a pastor. And this is what I preach. And this is what I know is the right thing to do is to forgive. And I, I've come to know that forgiveness does not always mean reconciliation. Because sometimes the damage is done. But you mm -hmm. have to release it in your heart. Yes. So that you can be free right. to con to continue on in life and to do what God has called you to do. And it's so powerful to forgive because often when we do forgive, especially when it's egregious, the person doesn't expect that forgiveness. It ministers and it witness witnesses to that person. I mean, none of us are perfect. Right. I've had people to forgive things that I've said to them. And it's mm -hmm. and it really warms my heart and it, it and it just shows God's love. So when I hear that pastor talking about how he had the opportunity to forgive his dad and he didn't. I mean, I immediately, when I got back to Linthicum, Maryland, I picked up the phone and I said, hey, dad, that's exactly what I said. <laughs> and I, right away, I just said, I want you to know I forgive you. And even though I did not feel it, mm -hmm. I was released to say it. So as you say it, I was speaking those things were, that were not into existence. Yes, yes. I didn't have this warm love for him because I didn't know him. Mm -hmm. But all I do know is that as an acquaintance, I appreciated his conversation and his honesty and acknowledging you know, what he had created and willing to take ownership for that. Wow, that's powerful. Uh, when you're always able to acknowledge, just like I said earlier, look, I'm going to take the blame for this one. I'll take the ball <laughs> take the for hit. that. Take the, take the hit, hit. Boy, yeah. <laughs> you know, when you're being real with yourself, yes. you know, that's, that's more powerful than anything because so, a lot of people don't get that. A lot of people get a throwback at them. 
Right. You know, so being a man and then being a man, because some men don't want to admit like that. You know? And, you know, and also realizing that sometimes we think that that person is in a better place. For example, I'll be real and I'll be, you know, transparent. If my father was, I would say living it up. When I say living it up, I don't mean materialistically, but just living it up. And, mm-hmm. and I just felt like he just totally forgot about us. But he had his struggles. Mm-hmm. You know, he had his struggles. And we have to realize that that person needs that forgiveness because mm-hmm. he told me uh, when I when I invited him, of course, we were inviting him, his children to come see us. And he said he was afraid. He admitted that he was afraid to come see us in our, on our territory. Wow. And I said, why are you afraid to come to Norfolk? He said, because of what I've done. He hadn't forgiven himself. Wow. You know, I feel like you all are going to throw rocks at me. He felt like it was going to be a trap for him to um, receive his punishment for all that he had done. Although the conversations were going well with us for months he was he had this fear he overcame that fear he came but Mm -hmm. he he was being honest about okay are y'all really is this real are y'all really trying to see me or is this a setup to you know beat me up for all that i've done and i would say his lowest point which really ministered to my heart and helped me to understand the power of forgiveness is when he shared with me that he felt i asked him about salvation Mm -hmm. and we hadn't met yet so I was ministering to him, or we were ministering to each other, because his words, I said, Dad, you may not consider yourself, I'm not a theologian myself, I love the Lord, I'm in Christ, and I know Jesus Christ and Him crucified, mm-hmm. and I know He's my Savior. And I said, but you know, what you say to me is scriptural. Right. Even though you're just talking from your heart, the Lord is using you to minister to me. But he said he felt so bad about not being a part of our lives that he felt that if Jesus walked past him, if Jesus was coming his way, he would walk past him. Oh, wow. He would ignore him. And I just can't imagine being that low. And at that point, I asked him, would you like to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And he did. And that was over the phone. Wow. Just imagine. <laughs> I know he probably said, God, my daughter did this, you know. Yeah, but, you know, many people pray. My yeah. other sisters, they pray for him. Mm-hmm. You know, they share, they pray. So it was a seed. That's good. Yeah. You know, I, I have to say. Um, God works the way he works because right. as a man, you can let your pride get in the way. Yes. And, you know, it could be easily said that, well, I, you know, I've moved on, you know, whatever, whatever. I really don't want to be, you know, a, a part of what's going on. So I'm just going to stay in my own little world and you stay over there. We can communicate, but, you know, you're fine. I'm fine. Mm-hmm. Don't bother me. But to set that pride aside to say, you know what, my daughters, you know, my family, they they didn't see the bad in what I did. They knew it happened. Yes. But they but they were strong enough to move past it. And because they were strong enough to move past it, now it's on me to move past it so we can be back as one again, so we can be at least whole. And what I have in me, I can release, and what they have in them, they can release and turn it over to God like it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And that's what that, that's really what it boiled down to was the release. Right. Of and everyone. Right. And releasing that, you know, that that feeling of abandonment or 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 abandoning um, and and feeling like it was their fault. Well, maybe it was me. Well, maybe it was me. Now everybody starts with a clean slate. Mm-hmm. Yes, you know? you know when we've been offended or hurt or abused, all we really want. And what I say for me, I can only speak for myself, but for most, you know, acknowledgement. Mm-hmm. I mean, to not even acknowledge my pain, to not even acknowledge the hurt. That's the first step to acknowledge it. Because then you can get past that. You can heal and you can get past that. Right. And it helps you to know that the person, at least if not empathizes, sometimes they may sympathize with right. you with what you're going through. Yeah. And it's not an easy fix. I mean, just because you acknowledge it doesn't mean, poof, you know, overnight right. Right. it's like it's right. okay. It's like, well, thanks for acknowledging it, but right. you're still da 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 yeah. You know, so you have, there's, there's this storming, norming, conforming that you go through. Pretty, pretty impressive in itself to, you know, put all that aside and come together as one and just say, yeah. we can get through this if we just, you know, especially to, to pray with him over the phone and not have any animosity towards him, but mm-hmm. still wanted to welcome him to Christ mm-hmm. and say, you know, this is this is what's going to heal us. Mm-hmm. Right. We need this. Right. And if you're willing to accept it, we can move forward with the next step. That, right. That's powerful. And the Lord, you know, the, we're convicted, you know, mm-hmm. by the Holy Spirit. I mean, we can't be... We can't be out here being witnesses 
to the world, but can't be a witness in our own inner circle. Absolutely. And sometimes we just have to wait for God to release us to be effective witnesses because we may have our own baggage and we don't want to, we don't want someone else to stumble because of our, our ineffective walk. Mm -hmm. So we have to wait until we're empowered to really carry that out because we don't want to be fake. We want to be genuine in our release of unforgiveness. So you just wait until God releases you because some people feel like, well, because you're not connecting with me, you haven't forgiven me. And that's not always the case. I've forgiven you, but I just don't trust to release because once that trust is broken, I mean, I don't know that you've really changed. Right. I have to allow God to show me mm -hmm. and I have to allow God to prepare me to transition. And that's what, I, that's, that's what that relationship with God comes in play because of course you have to trust God enough to, to trust in what he's doing. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. And I, I think for the folks out there listening, this is, you know, you got to understand this, this is powerful because she's sharing a story where um, she con reconnected, reconnected with, you know, mm -hmm. her father and she put everything aside and they came together under the belief of God. There's a lot of folks out there right now who feel like, you know, they're abandoned or don't want to be, you know, they, they feel like they're not worthy or, um, they can't be a part of something because of who they are. But just think, the, the belief was enough to, to do it over the phone. Mm -hmm. Amen. Know, to, mm -hmm. For him to, to say, you know what, I've been talking and I've been listening, and my man, this is something different. Mm -hmm. I'm, I wasn't expecting this. You'd be surprised what you, what you think you expect to what actually is once you put God in the mix. That's right. And I like what you said, I wasn't mm -hmm. expecting this because I, if you recall, a friend of mine, a gentleman friend of mine, who had a relationship, a powerful relationship with his father, said to me, you need to find your dad. And my exact words to him That's were, right. no, I don't need to find mm -hmm. him because I don't need him. Mm -hmm. You know, all is well. I don't have any animosity towards him. But then I realized I did. Yeah, you mm -hmm. did. You know, yeah. I did. And, mm -hmm. I, and yeah. oh, I mean, just to be able to say the word, I had never used, and this is powerful, I had never used, I had never used the word dad mm -hmm. towards anyone else. I mean, I may use it in a sentence referring to someone else's dad. I had never called someone dad. Mm -hmm. right. So it was just rolling off of my tongue. Wow. Like, I just couldn't get enough of saying dad this. I couldn't get enough of his voice. Like a wow. kid in a His soul. voice was, <laughs> his voice. He spoke very well. He had a melodic voice. He could sing. He used to sing. But he is, his voice meant the world. Just to hear him say, hi, Brina. Oh, my gosh. I mean, he had a deep, very soothing, calm voice. And that's I won't awesome. forget that voice. Yeah, that's awesome. You know what it reminds you of when you see all these stories, some stories you see of people reconnecting with moms and dads and sister siblings later on in life. Mm -hmm. And we don't know that experience if we've never been there. We don't know the joy and the excitement of being reconnected to someone you haven't seen in years or decades. You don't even know. You don't even know. Yes. So I, I'm sitting here literally with chills, goosebumps on my arms, like, because it's almost like I could feel your excitement, the joy that you received when you connected with your dad. Yes. And at first it was just only over the phone at first. You yes, know? only over the phone. Yeah. I'm so grateful that my sister found him. I have to acknowledge that. In case you're listening, Kim, yes, you found him. <laughs> and I'm so grateful for that. And, you know, well, as far as the first meeting, he did come to see us, mm -hmm. and that was, you know, we had an opportunity to visit with him in his hotel room and, you know, do an outing. He met my sister's um, daughter, okay. which would be my niece and his yeah. granddaughter, and he met, you know, his grandson. He met all of us, and my mom, and my mom, wow. bless her heart, she was so <laughs> wow. open to meeting him when he visited. I mean, she already knew him, he was, you know, but just seeing him, mm -hmm. in spite of it all, she was open to it. I mean, of course, mom kept it real. You know, yeah, don't yeah. don't forget. Yeah. You know, don't forget in all yeah. this that I was there. And so, you know, she kept it quite real. But uh, it was a wonderful experience. And then I got the opportunity to go see him in Kansas. He okay. was living in Leavenworth. When I would mention Leavenworth, it was like, is he in jail? Is he in prison? Because that's, that's all you think about with Leavenworth. And that's all that's there. No, I'm just teasing. But it's country, you know, bells of hay. I was like, I cannot believe this. But when I got to Leavenworth, I had to get a rental car. And so my father said he would meet me because I caught the shuttle at the rental car place. Mm -hmm. I called to let the gentleman know because he gave me the number. I don't know if he's there, that I'm, but I'm on the way. 
He said, your father has been here five hours ahead of time. Wow. He is out in the car. <laughs> I was like, you're kidding oh me. Out in the car God. waiting on you. And I, I can't remember. I probably journaled it somewhere. I actually went on Facebook and got some snippets. It's just amazing with Facebook because I would post some of this yeah. So to take me back to that time. But I, it was smooth. It was it was like I've known him all my life. It, I didn't have any any uncomfortable feeling or anything. And when we got to his apartment, I guess, you know, he hadn't had. Now, he does have another. Uh, uh, I do have a brother. Okay. So he remarried after my mother. Okay. And he had a son. But he was living alone. And I remember I slept in the living room on the sofa. You know, it was a nice big plush sofa. And he was in because he only had a one bedroom. Mm -hmm. And I remember him peeping out because he didn't. He was like, I cannot believe I have a daughter. You know, I saw him peeping out the door like, I can't believe she's in here. And, and I'm sure that was like, wow, I can't believe this. Mm. Wow. Yeah. It's just amazing all together. I am just um, loving your story <clears throat> mm -hmm. and encouraged by it. You getting choked up over there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, because it's just that you, for years, even though I was, I grew up with my dad, it, my dad was mean. You know, he was just so mean. And I always say for no reason. My husband used to call him uh, the warden. <laughs> <laughs> my father, yeah. Corey would call him the warden, even though he didn't meet him till what, about 97? Mm -hmm. But from 97 on, you know, and he worked with Corey. Corey worked with him for a while because my father does construction. He is old busy, built homes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So um, so he got to work with Corey. Corey got to work with him for a while. He's like, man. That dude there, <laughs> I was like, you ain't got to tell me. And I was thinking to myself, how long they going to last, you know? Right, so, right. But it just, I think my thing is, is because the fond memories and the uh, relationship y'all built over the years. And I know, because I mean, I don't know all of them, but I saw the journey. Right. And just seeing the journey could just make anybody glow and give them hope. You know, it's a matter of people coming together, people just really willing to reach out. Right. Willing to reach out. You, you know, know you're right. Uh, I do recall, and I'm fast forwarding a bit, but after his home going service, because he did pass away in February 2015, two ushers that were at my church said they were so inspired yeah. that they were going to reach out to their absentee father. Uh, one of the associates you know? <laughs> at the funeral home decided that she was going to reach out to her father. And one of my friends who I shared the journey with, who came to the, the wake and the homegoing service mm -hmm. I saw where he reached out I didn't even know he wasn't connected wow. he had a very large family so what happened with uh, my father is that he developed dementia he had dementia so I started becoming uh, worrisome about mm -hmm. his health because he would call me and be very forgetful you know about even about where his money was and mm -hmm. I was antagonized because I mean I couldn't be in Kansas I was torn. I was mm -hmm. under duress because I couldn't be there to help him. I would share that with my mom. So when I paid trips, I mean, my father was not one with funds. So when he was homeless, he became homeless mm -hmm. because he wasn't paying his bills, mainly because of the dementia. He had the money to right. do it, but he was just becoming reckless with his funds. And when he became homeless, so I didn't have a place to stay when I went there. So I would have to invest in the hotel, et cetera. But I was more so concerned, obviously, about his health. And what tore me apart was he's, he was living in a car. And he had a girlfriend who told me that he decided to go out on his own. And I said, why are you doing this? He said, I'm a renegade. I'm a renegade. And I was like, oh, my God. You are 70 some years old talking about you're a renegade. I got this, Brina. You know, he, he was a, a veteran. He was in the Air Force. And he was in the Navy. So between the two, he did 12, I think 12 to 14 years. I can't recall. But it tore me apart to see him living in a car. Mm -hmm. But he knew goodness enough. He, he stayed with me in a hotel. And like I said, he wasn't used to having a daughter around or his children around when he would come to see us. So when we were in the room, even though he knew that was a good covering, he didn't feel comfortable I mean, I didn't think anything of it because, of course, I'm fully clothed. Right, but right. he was like, I don't feel comfortable, Brina. That's what my family calls me. I don't feel comfortable, Brina. I was like, you don't feel comfortable? And he said, I don't. I don't feel comfortable because it was twin beds. I mean, you know, double beds. Right. I don't feel comfortable sleeping next to you. I'm like, but you're not sleeping next to me. You're in a queen bed. So what I did is I took the ironing board. And I asked for an extra blanket, and I put a blanket <laughs> over the ironing board, and I put my two big pieces of luggage on top of it. So when he was laying down, he couldn't see me. Yeah, I said, yeah. see, Dad, I've created a barrier. 
<laughs> but uh, that was during the time he had dementia, and okay. he was living out of a car. And I really wanted to bring him home, but he did not want to leave Kansas. His mind was still, Kansas was very vivid, still in his mind. Mm-hmm. He, he always promised us that he was going to come to Virginia, get a house, live here, and die here. Oh, wow. But he just couldn't get past Kansas. So I left. I had to leave, you know, because time ran out. I had to go back to work. And I, I, I just, I, I couldn't get any sleep. But the most beautiful part was when someone from the Leavenworth, uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower, Mm -hmm. the VA, Dwight D. Eisenhower Veterans Administration called me because they had my information from my visits there. And they told me that they found him in a shed. He called. Thank God he called them. They found him in his storage unit trying to make sleep there. Wow. And he went with them. And I I cannot praise the Dwight D. Eisenhower medical center enough because they truly take care of their veterans i mean they put him in this is a house a program called safe haven Mm -hmm. someone started as a nonprofit. i don't know how many they had three of three houses Mm -hmm. i think it's two to three houses and about maybe 10 to 12 veterans in each house they had their own room they each got all got full meals Mm -hmm. for free they could stay there for six months it was like transitional housing and if they wanted to extend it they they could and they extended it for my father but we eventually got him here is what i'm saying because he forgot about kansas i don't thank god for dementia but because of dementia that's how we got him here because he forgot his past freedom enough exactly he forgot his past and god allowed him to move forward here and we got him into a nursing home wow that's awesome what a journey though yeah what a journey. Um, That's what happens when you got a renegade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I know you want to know what kind of help I had, yeah, you know, in getting I, him here. Well, when I went to Kansas, I didn't know anyone, as I stated. So I worked for the Postal Service, and one of the postmasters I befriended. You know, because I always have a friend since I work for the Postal Service. I'm always calling. I ask them, hey, I'm coming to your area. Can you tell me? To? And they're so friendly. That's but she decided to help me on her birthday to pack up his things. And we flew back here to Virginia. And I when I stepped out on faith because he didn't have a room. Now, he had to stay in a nursing home because the dementia was so severe okay. that if I was at work, he would probably wander out or let people in my house. His judgment was not mm-hmm. well. So he, he, although he was in a nursing home, I visited him, you know, and my sister did too. I visited him several times throughout the day. Trust me, they knew me. <laughs> they knew me and they knew us. So it was all good. Okay. Well, Corey, you had a question. Well, you know, I was just listening to yeah. the journey because it, it, it is a, a fulfilled journey. A lot of things going on and the orchestration behind everything happening is what really... Um, it was a lot, but it was also, it seemed to be a lot of transition, mm-hmm. you know, a little bit smoother than what you would normally expect. And, yes. You know, because of the course, the way things <laughs> laid out. Now, um, I understand, you, you know, being a, you say you befriended the postmaster. Um, how, did you did you use a lot of leave to get, you know, because of course you're talking about traveling a lot. Exactly. You know? No, I couldn't, I couldn't afford to use a lot of leave at that time. I hadn't done any sick leave dependent care. I didn't know the severity mm-hmm. of his illness when I went out. So I, I didn't have, you know, FMLA approved or anything. But I was there for six days. And, you know, I, I befriended her. You know, mm-hmm. I just basically told her what was going on. She didn't have to get that intimately involved, but she did. And we were able to get him here. And I had never filed for Medicaid for anyone before. Mm-hmm. You know, because I was always looking. My parents, my mother, I put my mother, always took care of the home goings, you know, mm-hmm. any uncle, aunt pass. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, we're now the senior citizens, you know, even though (laughs) I'm I'm far from it. But I mean, we're now the senior citizens who are doing this. And it was so, the process was so smooth. I'm really grateful to Golden Living. He was in Golden Living in Kansas and they had a Golden Living here, Here 10 minutes from my house. And I called them and said, I don't know if I can do this because he doesn't, you're not approved yet. He's not approved for Medicaid. He can't live with me because I already see that he's wayward. You know, he'll wander and go out, especially mm-hmm. with sundowning. Mm-hmm. And she said, just come. I could, she said, just come. We've got you. Oh, wow. And I was like, wait a minute. Wait, you don't understand. He's coming from Kansas. Right. There's no going back. Right. I, I can't take off. She said, just come. We've got a bed for you already. It, wow. I, it, it was unbelievable. He was approved with, without, with, without a problem. And he was there. It was. It was just a. It, and we even flew. I mean, 
I'm not materialistic at all, but we flew first class. I mean, I had already paid for the tickets for economy, wow. and I explained to her about my dad having a problem with his legs and needing to stint his legs. And the representative on the phone said, do you know it's only going to cost you $50 more for both of you? Now, when have you ever seen that to fly first class? That's and they just and we and this is days before the flight. And she said we just so happened to have the very first row open, Dang which was that. extended was labor. I could not believe there. it. We were in the first <laughs> seats for first class, wow. and it was it was wonderful. And he would have did that too. Yeah, <laughs> he loved wearing his he loves wearing his military. Um, clothing you know items so he had on his military dress, hat yeah. and all the people walking by the guys all the veterans well, ladies too congratulations oh no thank you for your service what they were saying oh, thank nice. you for your service it was a wonderful trip family met us at the airport it was great now you you said something <laughs> important you said before we even got to or or as i'm making a phone call she said don't worry I got you. She did. And I wish I could recall her name, but that's not important. She's no longer at that facility. But that's what she said. And, and she meant it. When I got there, I couldn't. I said, you don't understand. I don't mm -hmm. have another option. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I have to. Because I had to bring him then while he was saying yes. Right. Because, you know, he could be resistant and decide not to come. Isn't it amazing what God had the plan already mapped That's out why I for say, you? you know, yes. You, you, I mean, it was like it meant to happen. Man. And All 10 minutes from my happen. house and 10 minutes from my job. It, it, so very convenient. But, but to have one there and one here. Right. right. Oh, yes. Right by where your, where your home is. That right there is, is a plan in itself. I don't believe in coincidence. I believe mm -mm. in things being It was being God. Right, right. The, the steps being in place. Mm -hmm. And whether you take the path right then and there or you take it a little bit later, the difference is just the, the amount of time and the, the things you go through in your journey to get to that. So in, in, when it was time for her to go, she left. Everything was taken <laughs> care of. I got you. She got there. Unbelievable. And everything was smooth. Now, smooth. it had to be like that because, of course, any other delay may have caused a little bit more turmoil. A couple right. of days later could have been the, the thing of sitting in, you know, economy and now dealing with dad not being. Yeah, he, I wanted him right. comfortable. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You know, he had leg issues. Right. Yeah. So, you know, these are the things that I think people really miss when it comes to understanding the word of God and understanding God in, in, in Jesus dying for you is the fact that he's got you. Yes. Yes. Regardless of the situation, not knowing doesn't stop you from believing. It should not stop you from believing. So you have. All this, all these things going on, the timing, the 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 communication, the connection, everything, and it, it all stems from I got you. Yeah, and it's funny you mentioned that because just yesterday or the day before, I posted on Facebook the scripture: "I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me." And then I say, translation: He's got you. He's got you. <laughs> <laughs> He's yeah. got you. I, I saw that. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think people, man, that's just, that's, that's something I got you. Don't yeah. worry about anything. Nothing in order, nothing in place, mm -mm. nothing done yet, but I got you. Just a step out on faith. And I, you know, I have to acknowledge so many friends, church members that prayed, you know, and including us, his children. Mm -hmm. So many people prayed that we would be able to get him here, prayed for his safety, who knew he was homeless. So there were so many people involved. He ended up getting baptized at my church. Wow. It was it was beautiful wow. and powerful. And then that experience helped me where I am today. Uh, my sister has been or is the primary caregiver for my parents, mm -hmm. my mother and my stepfather. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, they both have you know, long-term issues, okay. you know. So it's going to be with them, but God has been keeping them. And my sister has recently experienced a health issue herself, so I and my other sister are stepping up to the plate, which brings me where I am now because I, I actually work in D.C. Mm -hmm. So my my employer has been gracious enough to work with me, and I'm so grateful. It's, it's his timing. Yeah. You know, his timing is everything because prior to now, prior to things being as they are, it, it probably would have been a struggle for me to prove the point, but there's no issue now, mm -hmm. whereas they're just like, Take you know, take the time that you need. I'm able to work from here, so it's a blessing if and, need be. Yeah, and it gives you the comments because you know that taking the time, you're not you're not afraid that something's going to change while you're right. Out. Yeah. That that's the peace that God gives. That's you. it. Yeah. He gave you peace. And that's it. That you could still you know take the time you need, but not worry. Yeah, it's funny you should mention that because my mom she was saying, well you know you need to go back to work, 
And I mean, which, you know, I'm, I, I've been working for 34 years. I love working. But I had to put her mind at ease to let her know that all is well, yeah. you know, without yeah. going into any details, yeah. all is well. So I'm grateful for my employer for having the flexibility to work with me. And, of course, I'm welcome back. You know, whenever I'm ready to go Mind back to, to that location. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I said it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't hear stories like this yeah. all the time, and it's just so so amazing. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm just really like overwhelmed today. I'm getting goosebumps again. You know, yeah. it's just a love story, and I love that of a parent and a daughter. You know, even in the adult age. Yeah, you know? listen for for any of y'all out there listening who are producers or movie movie producers or movie plays. <laughs> This young lady here, Sabrina Brown. Sabrina Brown. Yeah. Right? Yes. Uh -huh. Somebody make her life a movie, cause that right there, that's a story that it really is. Listen, mm -hmm. that's a, that's powerful. And there's so her, many players in that story, though. Get up so on here many players and, call, and prayers. Man, I tell you, they, yeah. you you listen. We got there's inspirational movies. That right there is inspirational. Yes, it is. Well, there are movies God. that yes, there are is. movies that you know touch you. And there are movies that touch, touch you, right, right. And I mean, I'm not a, I'm not an emotional, sentimental kind of guy. I am. But I, you know, I'm, I'm that, 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 that was pretty touching. I, yeah. I mean, you know, to know that, to see the things that are taking place, and to know that, you know, not even being in your life, but watching just as you talk, mm. the things as they, as they transition and transpire in your life, um, that, that's, that's inspirational, right? Somebody call, the email, <laughs> see something, because this needs to be made into a movie or, you know, a made-for-TV series or something, because this is powerful. And, you know, you think you know someone, even though I don't know how many years I knew my dad before he passed, 12, 15, I, I can't even recall, maybe 20. I don't have the exact date committed to memory, but I do have it in my journal. But, you know, you do find out about people at their home going service. Yeah. I mean, you, you think you know someone, you do know them, but when other people speak. And so when I requested letters, uh, I notified the VA in Leavenworth that he had passed. And I had no idea because, mind you, over these years, Dad was always telling me, I have to go to work. We would be on the phone, Green, I'm getting ready to get up, I'm going to work. Or, you know, I'll call you after I get off work, you know, because he may be on a break. I have to go to work. So I thought he was supplementing his very limited pension. But when I got the letter from his care, uh, I forget their names, but they, they aftercare. She was a director of aftercare. Mm -hmm. He went through some, you know, alcoholism issues and things like that, and he got himself together. Mm -hmm. But when I got a, a letter from the director of aftercare, and she expressed in her letter his, their appreciation for him volunteering he wasn't getting paid. What? He was driving those veterans for over 15 years. Wow. Showing up every morning, picking them up. He would pick up the, and take transport them from the airport or wherever they needed to go. I'm like, wait a minute. I had to call her. I said, Vicky, he was volunteering? She said he was volunteering. Unbelievable. Movie. A man without much, you know, but willing Movie. to give to help others. And that's what we're all called wow. to do. So, you know. We're all called to, to give, serve. and we all do serve. You know, we may not parade it because it's not to be paraded, exactly. but we ought to serve and exactly. we ought to give. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Wow, what a story. You know, they always say you all never know. You never know what people go through. Yeah. But I just, I didn't know that much, but I just, for some reason, I just knew you had an amazing story and a, your journey just by me watching it. I just always felt something because I, I didn't know all of that, but just mm -hmm. to see you regularly just visiting and going there and being there and taking time from your job. And I know you had to take time from your job yeah. to get there. And it's so, good. I'm glad that I didn't abuse that so right. that I could have somebody to take time from my job. But, you know, with every story, there are different um, characters. Everybody's, so my sisters, they have, you know, their stories to right. share as well, especially with caring for, and I can't emphasize that enough, my mom and my right. stepfather with yeah, me yeah. not being able to be there and just doing an outstanding job. I mean, outstanding. My, my stepfather, they thought he was going to pass away, but, um, but God. Isn't that amazing? Wow. I'm yeah. just loving this. So, um, God, y'all, it's 2.53. I'm like, <laughs> I'm not ready to hang up yet. Sabrina, leave a word of inspiration. Motivate our listeners right now. Well, I want to share, as you all have mentioned, that we never know what people are going through. Everyone has a story. And 
when we're going through, like I, I, I'm currently still going through a few things, when we're going through our struggles, as you stated earlier, share them. Yeah. When God releases you, some things are so painful that you're not ready to share them, and I understand that. But you do have someone that you can share, the, that you can share because the more you talk about it with that confidant, the stronger you will become to share your story with others. Because the word says we overcome by the blood of the lamb, the blood came first, and by the word of our testimony. Mm -hmm. So although I may not have the exact trial of others, I can get strength from that trial because at the end of the day, faith, you trusted in God, mm -hmm. and you won. Mm -hmm. And winning doesn't always mean getting the end result that we want. Right. It means we're still here, yes. we're standing, the trial did not break us, did not, break break us yep. did not have us uh, backslide or turn away from Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Because some days Amen. you're like, oh, my God, why me? Yeah. So share your trials yes. because it will help people to overcome. And honestly, people will feel more comfortable relating to you. It's unfortunate that sometimes if we think an individual has everything going on, you know, we may... I, well, you know, you may you may have some animosity towards that person or be envious or whatever. But as soon as you find out they had a trial, then it's like, oh, yeah. I can embrace you. But it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be that way because we right. all go through trials. And just because you haven't shared your trial with me mm -hmm. doesn't mean you haven't gone through something. Amen. So we're to pray and we're to we're to pray for blessings for everyone because I currently have a trial that I'm going through. But I know that when God releases me, mm -hmm. I will be obedient Amen. to what He's calling me to do. Amen. I'm just trying to to deal with me right now right. i'm just trying to nurse me yes. so that i don't have to incur uh, wounds you know wounds that i that i really don't want to handle right now yeah. well it's very important to make sure we care for self as well because <laughs> absolutely we could give so much uh, to others we give so much of ourselves like now you're even working with your mom now so yes. you give so much of yourself so it's very important to step back recoup recharge and go back right you know but you have to fill back up yeah and, and that's what i want to do that. because my sisters have done so much and you know they need a break yeah basically and i share with one of them hey you know i got you I got you for right now, you know, yeah. I got you. But I do know that I do have to take care of myself. So I'm trying to stay on that workout regimen. I wasn't for a couple of months. You know, my manager asked me, she said, are you, you know, keeping up your regimen? And I said, no, not right now. She's like, no, you have to do that. And so I vow to commit to taking care of myself so that I can be healthier and wealthier to not just help my mom, but to continue to serve yes. in the church okay. and to continue to pray for myself that I will be all that God has called me to be. So that's my word of encouragement, Amen. that you acknowledge where you are, that you share it, and there's no trial or struggle that we're going through that someone else hasn't gone through. Amen. But there has to be a point of trust. You know, We're not to openly share with, uh, as far as discernment, with those who can't handle. Amen. Can't handle, because everybody's not perfect. Yeah. And some people will abuse that yeah. and just ask God for discernment when it's that sensitive. But when you've released it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. When you've released it to God, it doesn't matter what others say. And that's when you know you're truly over it. Yes, yes. And we want to get over it. Well, there okay. you go, you okay. all. What an amazing story. I'm with Corey. That's a story in his own. That's, to God be the glory. A, what you call it? Uh, um, what they call those things? Uh, I forget what you call it. But anyway, that need to be told. Yeah. That need to be oh, shared it. because it's, it, it can motivate so many more that's probably out there thinking, God, should I connect to my mom? Should I connect to my dad or reconnect with my siblings? Because people hurt you. People do things. Once you forgive, I mean, the rest is history. Yes. But you know what? Thank God, y'all. Uh, we thank you all for listening to us. We thank Sabrina for thank you. Uh, being our guest today. Thank you. We definitely appreciate it. Thank you, it. Kelly. I'm glad you came on because we got to hear more. It's been a couple this. years. Yeah. We've been trying to do this, and we finally did it. So, it's awesome. yes. So, thank you so much. Thank you. you, you got it's an more honor. To share. We have to bring you back later on. We're going to keep continue to follow you uh, on you. your journey. I know I am because I've been doing it. <laughs> So, well, thank you all. Remember the fourth annual Caregivers Recognition Black Tie Gala in Hampton, Virginia on November the 4th. 
uh, come join us. Submit a name for a veteran because it's Veterans Day as well. And we want to always make sure we say that it's Veterans Day. Veterans Day, And we want to recognize and honor the veterans, their yes. caregivers, the wounded warriors, their caregivers. Submit their names. Remember, they are free on Kelly's Choice. We don't believe in nominations for uh, caregivers. So that's November the 11th in Hampton, Virginia. Go to our website, www.kellyschoiceinc.org. Thank you again. We be back next week. Same time, same channel, same station. <laughs> God bless you, remember, everyone. Yes, to smile for someone every day. You never know who you may bless. Take care. Thank you for joining us. Brought to you by Kelly's Choice. Join us next Friday at 2 p.m. to learn more about the caregivers and the different experiences.